pop, boop, pop, beep, pop. And that's my favourite ringtone. Great. I mean, was there a reason you called? Yes, we're doing a review of Decrypto and uh, its new expansion, Laser Drive. Great. Cool. Uh, when are we doing that? Oh, uh, right now. Okay. Better go. Bye. Decrypto, hey? Why, that sure sounds like a game we already covered a long time ago. So we're going to have to crack the code of why we're returning to it now with a video review. Hmm, it's too early to say, but I have my theories. Now listen, don't tell anyone, but sometimes at Shut Up and Sit Down we get things wrong. And that's entirely natural. We are, after all, only humans, and humans are just moderately complex sausages. Mistakes are a part, a natural part of that pre-made meaty blend that gets squeezed into the sacks. But back when I was but a twinkle in the eye of YouTube, I reviewed Coup, the simple hidden role game that I concluded was pretty good. Yeah, wrong, 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 wrong. Coup is a stone cold classic. It's a game I keep coming back to year after year. My appreciation for it growing and blooming while my official thoughts on it remain frozen in time, locked in stasis. Not horribly wrong, but still painfully inaccurate. And when we covered the crypto, we didn't get it that wrong either. We still strongly recommended this game, but I've never been happy that it didn't get a video. And also, I'm constantly slightly aghast at the fact that our written review for this game described it as grey and grim. It is not. It, to me, is beautiful. And so we're back from outer space. This game to crypto will smush a smile right in your face. Well, hang on, wait, no, Matt, you can't review things twice. Did you think I'd mumbled? Well, I can do what I like. I will survive. Listen, I cannot and will not bury the lead with this one. I mean, there's only two reasons we come and come back to a game like this. Either it turned out that the components were made of Nazi gold, or it was a game that we felt like we hadn't emphasised enough just how much it's a classic that everybody should own. And thankfully for the crypto, none of the game's components are made of metal. Let's just have the badge on the screen right now. We've already given it the badge. We've already recommended this game, okay? There's no big surprise here, but I think it's time for me and us to reaffirm our vows to this beautiful, loving, generous, patient box. And also Tom's here. Hello. He's gonna talk about the laser disc expansion. So, how does it work? Two teams sit behind two screens, each of which secretly holds four words. Sliding these double-sided cards behind the red plastic screens that then reveal themselves with words, as if using actual magic. Your team then has four words, which are then known to you and your team, and your team alone, as one, Two, three, and four. And each round, one person from each team will take one card from their pleasingly square deck of floppy disk code cards and be given a three number combination. For example, four, two, three. It's then the job of that code maker to try and come up with three specific clues that will then get their team to correctly guess in the correct order. I've still got a wobbly table. Lockdown pandemic, keeping it real. 423. So with this combination of what we've got, 423, I'd have to get them to guess electricity, then whale, and then recipe. So I might say, I'm putting myself on the spot here a little bit, battery for electricity, uh, blubber, uh, and soup. But quite honestly, those clues are terrible. You see, you needn't be so simple about this. You can basically do anything you want. 
as a clue. You could say a sentence, you could say a single word, you could do a little dance, you could make a little noise, you could get down tonight. And the rules about what you can't do are very self-explanatory. You can't give clues that make reference to the positions of these cards. You can't give clues that are to do with what the words sound like. It has to be to do with the actual meanings of these words. And finally, and most importantly, any clue you give to your team has to be public information that anyone around the table could potentially know. So if you're playing with family, and I would say to my brother, Karen, because we have an Aunt Karen who was a famous souffle chef, who was then sadly eaten by a whale. And so after I've provided my team with three fantastic clues, they'll confer with one another while I sit there quietly, at the end of which they will hopefully come back with the correct combination of four, two, three. Whew, safe. But, 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 but. And this is a huge but. Honestly, it's untenable. Before my team guess, the other team get a chance to intercept, to try and guess the code before my team do. And if they manage it, then they get one of these special tokens. You get two of those at any point, then you win the game. But again, they're not gonna be able to guess the combination of the code. And that's gonna to continue to be the case until you find yourself frantically trying to think of the fourth different clue for whale. I mean, how hard can it be to whale? Oh, they're gonna know it's a whale. I've said, why did I say blubber? Oh. Ta-da! That's Decrypto. It's a game of swaggering into a police interrogation thinking you're a criminal genius and then finding that suddenly the detectives are all pointing at notes and chuckling to themselves and realizing you've made a huge mistake. It's absolutely glorious. And so what's the answer? Well, the answer is obvious, right? You don't give simple clues. You give dastardly complicated clues. When I say whale, I'm gonna think, uh, uh, uh... Orca? But obviously if you give a clue that clever, you could be in trouble. Because if your team get it wrong with that perfect information, they don't get the combination right, you get a bad token. What happens if you get two bad tokens? Someone comes around your house, takes the crypto away from you, and, and you lose the game. The best way that I can describe this game is to say that Decrypto is like intellectual surfing. It's all about just catching that wave just right. And I'm aware that my hairstyle at the moment really means I shouldn't talk about surfing. But honestly, it's an analogy that works. Listen, if you play it safe, you're not going to go very far. But if you can just ride that wave on the very cusp of incomprehensibility, <sighs> So you give your team three really weird clues and they're looking back at you like blah, 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 blah. and you just think, oh, write it out, write it out. You keep quiet. They whisper, they whisper, suddenly a spark <coughs> and they all go and they point and they whisper and then they turn to you with this wonderful grin and a nod and they got it. They've got it. You've got it. And it's this wonderful, rich, generous, chunky moment that you share with one another silently, like you're gorging on a gigantic mental Toblerone, getting it all over your faces. And then you look at the other team, bamboozled, no idea, absolutely gleefully unable to keep up with you at all. Just champagne for Team Genius, I believe. Champagne for Team Genius, we're the best. Oh, but I just remember that this entire game is mirrored in design. Which means that while you'll savour that glee of seeing the other team stumped, you're probably only a few minutes away from realising that you've got five distinct clues for their number three. And you've got absolutely no idea what it... Oh, wait. Hey! Hey, they've taken our champagne! Oh. If I was to have a criticism, of Decrypto, I'd say that it's an engine that takes a little while to warm up. The first couple of rounds can drag a little, and if you've not played the game before, for the first five minutes or so, you might not feel like you're having that much fun. Now, there is a timer in the box, which you can use to speed along those first couple of rounds, but I don't know if there's many things worse than kind of getting out a device and saying to people, hurry up so we can have fun. Um, so I don't know how I feel about that. 
But once both teams have at least a nugget of information to start rolling around in their minds, this is a team game that plays like three to eight people, and it just doesn't have any downtime. Which is kind of nuts. Look, this is the only game I've had to re-grab the attention of players, and it's not because they've become distracted or they don't realise it's their turn. It's just that they've become so obsessed with trying to crack your puzzle that they've forgotten to give you a piece of theirs. Five to ten minutes into Decrypto, and this neat, sharp system becomes this wild Jackson Pollock of grimaces and grins. And teasing new players into it is a bit like trying to coax an alien onto a log flume. Look, if you're just seeing this thing, we're going to go up a belt for a few minutes and it's going to be a bit boring, but then we're going to have this roller coaster with splashes of genius. And yeah, uh, you might find that the plastic seats leave your bottom soggy with hubris, but at the end of it, we'll have this beautiful snapshot moment and we'll all be able to cherish this and look back on it and share this experience. Look, what was that? What was your clue number three? What was that about? Why did you keep doing the clues to do with onions? It doesn't make sense. Ah. And this is what's beautiful, right? You can try and guess what the other people's words are. Doesn't, isn't part of the game, but it's fun. And even if you lose, the consolation prize is finding out the answer to a question which has been driving you crazy, which in itself is a really good prize. And there's a tiny box expansion for this game that's really good too. Here to talk about it right now is Tom. Laser Drive doesn't add much to Decrypto's frankly perfect formula, but if you've played Decrypto half to death, this makes the game more whimsical and ridiculous. The big change is these new cards, which each have a strange category on them. For example, insults, titles of films, Brilliant people who are called Tom. Ha 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 h ha 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 h ha 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 ha. Just a funny joke. Each round, one of the clues you give must match that category. But here is the rub. If all three of your clues match that category, you get a lovely token. If you collect two tokens, you can guess the actual words behind the other team's board. First off, this is wonderful, because it takes a fun thing you already do, and officially integrates it. Secondly, is also an exercise in triple distilled hubris. When it all works you will feel like a wizard who is twice as spicy. But if it feels so often, what is the point? I think it acts well to balance out egos. It is like an obvious trap for clever clogs players. Ultimately it is a frivolous extra that you will enjoy. But dip in and out of. It is chips and dips. That is my review. It is chips and dips. Thanks Tom. I mean jokes aside he really did write all of those thoughts and I've just sort of conveyed them in that that way it's not really a robot it is actually Tom and what he thinks babies babies oh, it's so babies off. babies switch it off and so that's Decrypto provided to us by Scorpion Mask and designed by Thomas Dagonet Lesperance I hope Lesperance oh, anyway a designer I think is really one to watch they made a game called Anomaly that came out a few years ago four players absolutely blinding three players not nearly as blinding two players pretty bad but those four players on that oh it's so close to being a classic definitely someone to keep an eye out for but this is a game that allows you to be delightfully clever throws you under a bus when you've been too clever and because of that i would just say as a final note maybe don't play this with people who you might get into fights with because <laughs> It can be really frustrating if you're not connecting mentally with other people. But for the same reason, it's that synergy that leaves you feeling so beautifully smug. It's like butter to my crumpets. And the last thing I'll say about this game is, yes, you can play it with a whole bunch of people around a table. But I think this is best when you play this just 2v2, maybe with couples, just you and your significant other and another couple. It's a really nice thing to enjoy just sitting back on some sofas or out in the park. And because there's no shared components and you're not passing things around, you can play it whilst pretty far away from other people, if for some reason 
there was some reason you had to be distanced physically from other people because of, I don't know, a global pandemic or something. Also, yeah, there's some other code cracking games that are actually quite fun. Obviously, you might have heard of code names. I don't actually own a copy of code names because everybody else in the world already does. But if you've not heard of that, you should check it out because it's simpler than this. And it's a lot of fun. It does make you feel clever, but it's never going to make you feel as clever and as beautiful as the crypto. I think if I had to choose one, I definitely choose the crypto. Make of that what you will. And there's also another one. I left in the other room. I'll be back in a minute. If you like your code breaking games to actually involve codes and uh, possibly breaking everyone's spirit, then Break the Code is quite fun. It's a bit like a cross between Guess Who and Sudoku, if that makes any sense. It's, it's quite fun, but you have to kind of, yeah, it's got actual numbers in it. So it's quite fun, but it's not as good as the crypto. I feel bad now just bringing it out and saying, all right, not as good as the crypto, are you? What are you doing here? Hey, what are you even doing here? But I guess that's what I did. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, then you can check out some of our other more recent videos. Why not check out a video with Tom Brewster in it? The man, the myth, the legend, our latest em employee. He's not here this week, obviously, but he is really very excellent. Also, finally, I'm just gonna say, if you'd like to maybe consider watching our donation pledge video, uh, asking people to chuck us some cash if they can afford to, but mainly saying thank you to people for donating because Thank you. You literally allow us to do this job. It's great. I'm going to leave you alone now. Goodbye. Thank you.